blues influence jazz, blues has also influenced rock. So some musicians have taken more from the blues as opposed to jazz, and some musicians have taken more from jazz than the blues. So I think it's really dependent on the artist and what they've done with what they feel and what they've been influenced by. To give you an example would be, you know, the jazz rock movement, right? I mean, how that started, you know, the, is jazz just swing? Is it triplets? Or is jazz when you're improvising? Okay, well, in folk music, there's improvisation. So is that jazz also? Did folk music influence jazz? If you listen to music from different eras, some of it is made up from influences from, you know, a generation behind it. Also influenced by what's happening that day, whether it's what's happening in society, what's happening in humanity. And I think it's a combination of all of these things and some things that we can't really put words to it. So I think it's based on many things as opposed to one major thing. A song like Stairway to Heaven, in, in, in the beginning intro of it, there's a, you know, the, the descending line and, you know, at some point it falls into an F major seventh chord, which essentially is a jazz chord. Right, so th there's the harmonic influence of, of jazz and a song like Stairway to Heaven, which is sort of a song that everyone knows. The basic structure of a chord, let's say a major chord, C major chord, is root, third, and fifth. But in jazz, a chord is hardly played that way. There's always some kind of an extension, whether it's the major seventh or the ninth, depending on the context and where it fits. Stairway to Heaven. I think 20, 30, 40 years from now, if you play guitar, you're gonna have to learn that song or you'll know about that song. To me, classic rock is a term that I would use for songs that have been through the test of time. You know, for me, classic rock songs would be mo more like anthems, you know? Like rock anthems, if you will. And for me, the only way something becomes classic is it goes through different generations and it can still stand on its own because it's so rich in context. It's not something that's very much influenced by one thing or a fad. It's, uh, it's timeless, classic. One thing I noticed with all the, like, the great classic rock guitarists, particularly Jimmy Page, they emphasize the improvisation aspect of it. Is that something, do you think, that was taken from the jazz and the blues? Absolutely, because uh, improvisation is, is your way of telling your story. And uh, that's why, why the, no two improvisers will ever sound the same. They could even be playing the same notes, but the way they phrase, the way they, uh, you know, deal with the time as they're playing, uh, makes it very unique and very original. Now, in the case of, you mentioned Jimmy Page, is he influenced by jazz? I'm pretty sure he's influenced by some jazz because most of these artists that they did what they did that was at the time groundbreaking, I would say, yeah, definitely there has to be jazz influence there because the improvisation is a huge part of it. Melodically, when a guitar player is improvising, when the influence is, you know, in jazz we have chromatics and the whole modal system. So rock players have utilized that concept, if you will, therefore expanding their vocabulary. The influences of jazz come through.
you know, we talk about this all the time. What is improvisation? Well, it's being in the moment and it's not being in the moment. Because the minute you think about it as you're improvising, you're not in the moment. You're not improvising anymore. It turns into licks. And we all learn licks because there are certain things you hear that you really like and you want to copy them. But it's someone else's, it's not yours. So it's good to be influenced and be inspired. But really at the end, the true artist is the one that has found their unique voice and someone that within the first few notes you go, ah, that's so-and-so. To me, that's an artist. Who's the Jimi Hendrix of today? You know, and when Jimi Hendrix played and recorded, did he actually think about how many albums he was going to sell? Or he just loved to play because he had something to say. And we all know, to this day, people are influenced by Jimi Hendrix. hundred years from now, people are still going to be influenced by Jimi Hendrix. Because he did one incredible thing. He was truly 100% himself. What he did was what he did. You know, you can't have two Jimi Hendrixes, there's only one. That's why if, if somebody would ask me from a younger generation about this, I would say work on your craft, be inspired, be influenced, but find your own voice. Because at the end, you know, when you're doing that journey of discovering what it is that you do, at some point you're going to have to look inwards. And to look inwards, it's probably the hardest thing and the easiest thing at the same time. That's great if someone sold 100 million albums, 1 million album or 1,000 albums for that matter. That's awesome. But to me that doesn't really relate too much about the merit of music and, uh, and what an artist stands for. Thanks for watching. My name is Daniel Sarkissian. I'm an independent filmmaker from Toronto. 